Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are looking at graphs, graphs related to Le Chatelier's principle. So we're looking at equilibrium graphs. So I want you to pay careful attention because in the exams, many a times they will give you a graph and ask you to apply this graph relating to equilibrium situations. Okay, so to begin with, we know that the factors that affect equilibrium are changes in concentration, temperature, and pressure. All right, so let's look at them in terms of graphs. All right, so look at this equation. We've got NO, nitrogen monoxide, and we add with nitrogen monoxide. We are adding oxygen, so nitrogen monoxide plus oxygen. Well, nitrogen monoxide plus oxygen will give us nitrogen dioxide. And the delta H is less than zero. If the delta H is less than zero, it means that the forward reaction is exothermic. All right, the forward reaction is exothermic. So that's important. And then if you look at the number of moles, 2NO plus O2 gives you three moles on the left, onto the reactant side of the equation. And on the right hand side, you got 2NO2. So there's two uh, moles on the uh, product side of the equation. All right, that's how we read it. So let's take our first situation. The concentration of NO is increased. So if NO is increased, what do we know in terms of Le Chatelier's principle? We know that if NO is increased, the disturbance is an increase in NO. According to Le Chatelier's principle, what would the system want to do? It will want to decrease the uh, excess of reactant, which is NO. Therefore, the forward reaction is favored. That's why I wrote you on the right hand side, the forward reaction is favored. So N, what's going to happen if you favor the forward reaction? The, 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 what's going to happen? The concentration of NO and O2 will decrease and the concentration of NO2 will increase. Correct. Now, if you look at it in terms of graphs, if you look at uh, the, the rate versus time graph, there's two graphs we're going to get. There's three types of graphs that they can ask in the exam, right? But if you look at here, we just drew two types of graphs. There's a rate versus time graph on the left, and on the right hand side, we've got a concentration versus time graph. So if you look at the rate versus time graph firstly, what has happened? At the beginning of the reaction, we see that the forward reaction, which is the forward reaction, NO plus O2. So the NO to reacts with the O2 to form NO2. And at the beginning, there's no NO2. And then as the NO reacts with the O2 to form NO2, the NO2 forms, and there comes a time where we get equilibrium, where the graphs are flat at this point in time here. Now, at the, at, the, at the end of this graph, at this certain point in time, there's a change in equilibrium situation. What did we do? We increased the concentration of NO, all right? So as a result, the forward reaction is favored. So because the forward reaction is favored, it will be higher than the reverse reaction. That's why it's in red here, all right? So the forward reaction is favored, so it will have to go higher. It will jump and then it goes higher and then the forward reaction is favored. NO reacts with O2 to form NO2. And this side shows that the NO2 is formed, right? <clears throat> so the forward reaction is favored and uh, this is how you draw the graph if there's an increase in concentration, right? Now, if you look at it in terms of the concentration time graph, right, we've got different colors here. NO is in black and O is in red. So at the beginning, NO reacts with O2. The concentration of NO will decrease. The concentration of O will also decrease. The concentration, the blue line will be NO2. The concentration of NO2 will increase. Until such time, at possibly this time here, whatever this time is, you will reach equilibrium. All right. And after equilibrium, there comes a time where there's a disturbance. Disturbance, in this case, we see what happens in this graph. We see that the black line, there's a jump in the black line. So this black line, the jump means 
the concentration NO, the concentration of NO increases. So there's a line going up. So that's your disturbance. And now because there's too much NO, you must get rid of the NO. So the NO goes down. The NO goes down. The concentration of NO will decrease. And the concentration of O will also decrease. That's why the red line is also going down. And as a result, the concentration of NO2 will increase until you get a new equilibrium where the graphs get flat again. So here we've got two graphs showing uh, the rate versus time graph showing uh, how the reactions change with the disturbance and we got a concentration time graph which shows how the diagram will look, the graphs will look. So we can see clearly here because there's a jump in NO that will be your disturbance and increase in concentration of NO. You can see it clearly on the concentration time graph. Okay, so what other uh, disturbance can we get? Right, if the concentration of NO is decreased, right? So if the concentration of NO is decreased, there's other variants also. Uh, what can happen is if you look at the, the rate versus time graph, uh, what happens, we see that if the concentration of NO is decreased, then according to the Chatelier, you will want to make more NO. So the reverse reaction is favored. All right. So if you look at your rate versus time graph, which reaction, your forward is a red uh, graph and your reverse reaction is your blue graph. So when the disturbance is created, we see that the reverse reaction is favored. That's why the blue line will be above the red line. The reverse reaction will be higher than the forward reaction. So you draw it like that. That the reverse reaction has a curve, but the forward reaction will be below. So you jump down and you make it reach a new equilibrium at this new point here, wherever that is. The graph will be flat. Okay, so that's the concentration of NO is decreased. If you look at our concentration versus time graph, we see the same thing. The concentration, what happens? There's an equilibrium first that is formed. And then at a certain point in time, there's a jump. There's a black line goes down. The NO decreases. And then we see that the NO will increase and the O will increase. The black line and the red line go up. And the NO2 goes down. So then we reach a new state of equilibrium. So again, here clearly you can see that the disturbance was a change in the concentration of NO. The NO now didn't jump up, it went down. So you can see it clearly there on the graph. So that's the concentration, if there's a change in concentration. And we represented Le Chatelier's principle on a, a graph. Now we'll take the next one. If the temperature is increased, right? So according to Le Chatelier's principle, what do we know? If the temperature is increased, then the endothermic reaction is favored. If you look at NO plus O2 gives you NO2, the forward reaction, the reaction A is E certain, <coughs> delta H is less than zero. So the forward reaction is uh, exothermic. So the reverse reaction is endothermic. So according to this, we see that the reverse reaction is favored. All right, and then if you draw a rate versus time graph, the rate is the blue line, so it must be favored, so it must end up going higher above the red line. So therefore we see that the reverse reaction is favored, it ends up going higher than the, uh, the blue line ends up being higher than the red line. Okay, in the exam, they won't show blue lines and red lines and black lines or yellow lines. What they'll show? They'll show maybe a solid line, and another one will be uh, shown as a dotted line or a dashed line, right? And we'll do examples of that when we do uh, questions relating to rates. If you look at a concentration time graph uh, that we have here, what do we see? The NO and the O2 reaches equilibrium for the first time. And then because the endothermic reaction is favored, the reverse reaction is favored. We see that the concentration of NO goes up, the concentration of O goes up, and then the concentration of O2 actually goes down. Okay, so we leave it at that. If you look at the next example, 
if the temperature is decreased, if the temperature is decreased, the system will move to increase the temperature. So it favors the forward reaction. So the forward reaction is favored. So if you have to show it in terms of your rate versus time graph, if you look at it, we have here, the forward reaction is in red and it must be favored. So at the change that we have, if we have a change, the, the disturbance, the forward reaction will have to end up being above the reverse reaction. So that's why the forward reaction, the red reaction is above the blue reaction. Okay. So that's how the rate versus time graph will uh, show. All right. If you look at um, the, the concentration versus time graph, uh, the exothermic reaction is favored. So the forward reaction is favored. Um, so the forward reaction is favored, the NO2 will increase, right? So if you look here, the blue line, it reaches equilibrium, the forward reaction is favored. So then the forward reaction is favored, it goes up and the NO goes down and the O goes down. So that's how we will see that the NO2 is favored by it going up on the graph. We got one more situation to look at, and that will be pressure. If you have an increase in pressure, what do we know according to Le Chatelet's principle? An increase in pressure favors the reaction with less molecules or less moles, right? So less moles is favored. If you look at the number of moles on the left-hand side here, there's three molecules, uh, three moles, and on the, uh, three, mo uh, three moles on the left, and on the right side, we got two. So the reaction with less moles is favored, therefore the forward reaction is favored. So if you increase the pressure, the forward reaction is favored. That's why the, uh, the reaction will increase the number of NO2. That's why if you draw it in terms of rate versus time, the forward reaction is favored. It will end up above the reverse reaction. So you'll have to draw it like this, where the forward reaction is above. The reverse reaction. Then if we look at concentration versus time, uh, if the concentration, uh, the concentration versus time, if the pressure is increased, initially, when you increase the pressure, if this is a, 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 a closed container, for example, all the gases are in a syringe, and you depress the syringe, then what will happen? All the particles will initially become closer. Right, so on the graph, what we see here, initially the NO will increase, the O will also increase, which is not clearly shown here, and the NO2 will also initially increase for a short space of time for the initial squashing of the gas, so to put it in, in terms of inverted commas, right? So initially, all the gases are closer, so all of them will go up. But according to Le Chatelier's principle, the reaction with less molecules is favored, so the forward reaction is favored. So if the forward reaction is favored, the NO2 will continue going up. It will go up to form a new equilibrium. The NO now, after the small, uh, short uh, increase, will go down. And the O2 will also go down. So sometimes when you talk of concentration, there will be a, a small uh, jump, and a small increase before there's a decrease, right? The other graph, as I told you, we've got a rate versus time graph. We've got a concentration versus time graph. And another graph that they can give you is, they'll give you a moles versus time graph. Moles versus time. So in the moles versus time graph, you won't get this jump. Okay. So you get the jump for, for, for pressure, and sometimes they'll give it to you for temperature as well. And then the last one, the pressure is decreased. If the pressure is decreased, we know that according to Le Chatelier, the reaction with more moles is favored. So the, the reverse reaction is favored in this case. So if you draw a rate versus time graph, we see if the reverse reaction is favored, the blue line must be end up above the red line. So the reverse reaction is favored. So the blue line is above the red line. And if you look in terms of concentration, what happens initially, they all go down. 
And then, because the NO2 is, uh, is the forward reaction, the, NO, uh, the NO2, the blue line will keep on going less. It will go down because the forward reaction is favored and the NO2 will go up and the, uh, sorry, the O2 will go up and the NO will go up. So NO is favored and O2 is favored, so they'll go up and the NO2, which is the blue line, goes down. You should be very careful about seeing the lines correctly. As you saw, I got a bit confused with the colors um, because you, you may confuse the O or the NO2. So be very careful about uh, looking at the lines properly. Which graph is which line? They'll give you solid lines, dotted lines, and dashed lines if there's more than two. Okay, and then um, what if there's a catalyst? How will the graph look if there's a catalyst? So if there's a catalyst, we, we did the rate versus time graph. How does the graph look? Both will go up and they'll both become flat. So they both increase equally. So if you look at the rate versus time graph, that shows the catalyst, they'll both go up and they'll both be flat. So there's the rate versus time graph. In terms of concentration versus time or moles versus time, what does a catalyst do? It just speeds up the time of the reaction. So the concentration of... Uh, the reactants and the products will stay the same. So at this point in time, it will continue going flat, it will be straight. Okay, so we will stop there again. I'll just uh, quickly um, go through the graphs. Concentration, if the, we've got a graph, uh, if you've got an equation, NO plus O2 gives you NO2, delta H is less than zero, right? So the forward reaction is exothermic. If the concentration of NO is increased, the forward reaction is favored, so the forward reaction will be above the reverse reaction. To show concentration increase, you see this is the only graph where there's a jump. All right, the NO, there'll be a jump, and then the NO gets less, and the O gets less, O2 gets less, and NO2 gets more. So there's a jump here, right? And then similarly, if one of the reactants or products is decreased, then the, the line will be down, All right? And so in this case, the reverse reaction is favored, the concentration of NO and O2 increases and the concentration of NO2 decreases. All right. If we go further, uh, the, if the temperature is, uh, if, we must want, if the temperature is increased, uh, we see that the exothermic, uh, the, the um, endothermic reaction is favored, the reverse reaction is favored. So if we show it on a graph, the reverse reaction will end up being above the forward reaction. So the blue line is above the red, uh, red line. And if you have to show the endothermic reaction in terms of um, the concentration versus time graph, we see that the concentration of NO and O2 decreases and the concentration of NO2 increases. Okay, we did that one. When we did the one where the temperature is decreased, we see that the exothermic reaction is favored, the forward reaction is favored. So that's why in the rate versus time graph, it's above the reverse reaction. And if you have to show it um, in terms of concentration versus time, the NO and O2 decreases and the NO2 will increase, right? And then we looked at the pressure, the pressure is increased. The forward reaction is increased. The forward reaction is above the reverse reaction in terms of your rate graph. In terms of your concentration graph, concentration versus time graph, we see they all initially increase and then the NO decreases and the O decreases and the NO2 will increase until a new equilibrium is reached with a flat line. And we see that if the pressure is decreased, the reaction with more moles is favored, the reverse reaction is favored. Initially, they all go down and then NO and O2 is increased and NO2 will decrease. And then if we looked at the catalyst, we see the rate versus time graph, they both increase uh, proportionately. So they both go up and then there's a flat line. And then if concentration versus time graph, there's no change in terms of the graph. So that will be, this is where we'll stop today. And now we need to do some practice exercises to make sure that we know our work.